Hi there, I'm Chihiro from Japan. Welcome back to the program. Let's learn a life lesson from a story together. Have you ever had the experience of talking to someone and noticing their expression start to cloud over? Even though you meant no harm, you may have made them uncomfortable. You might regret the conversation afterward and think, maybe I shouldn't have talked about the subject. I'm sure many of you have had this kind of experience. It's likely that you brought up a sensitive topic unintentionally. Today, I'd like to speculate on how to identify topics that make people uncomfortable and should be avoided. It's important to be able to discern sensitive topics that the person in front of you might not want to be touched upon. For example, let's say you're talking to a co worker about their childhood. In the course of the conversation, you might ask questions such as, Where did you live? or What did your dad do for work? You can tell if the person finds a topic complicated by how long they take to answer a question about it. The longer it takes to answer, the more likely there is a reason. Why they don't want to talk about it. It's because the person might have some kind of complex about that topic, so it's a sensitive topic that should not be touched upon. For example, if you ask, What do your parents do? and the response is delayed, it may be that the person doesn't want to talk about their family. Or they have some sort of issue related to it. In this case, it's important not to delve any further into the topic. This method is easy to understand and use. If the person is hesitant to answer, they might say, hmm, or ask for clarification. By asking for clarification, the other person is unconsciously buying time to think about how to answer the question. If the other person responds in this way, it's likely that there's a sense of inferiority involved, and there's a reason why they don't want to talk about it. If the other person reacts this way, or if you think the topic wasn't a good one, there are two things you can do. First, change the topic. Obviously, you're going to do that. You can say something like, Speaking of which, the other day, and steer the conversation in a different direction. The second important thing to do is to keep that in mind. For example, she doesn't like talking about appearances, or our boss doesn't want to talk about family. By remembering these things, you can build a better relationship with the other person and have a conversation in which they feel comfortable. Have you ever noticed someone around you who is liked by everyone? You know those people who are popular and well liked by many. Have you ever wondered what they do to make everyone love them? Well, the answer is simple they praise others when they are not around. You need to focus on the word praise others when they are not around. 
people who are liked by everyone praise others when they are not around. They say things like, He's amazing, isn't he? Or, She's such a great singer. Or they might say, If you need help with computers, ask him. He knows everything. By praising others, they make them feel good and appreciated, which in turn makes them more likable. Just imagine for a moment. Let's say your boss praised you. He says, You have a lot of potentials. You surely feel happy, but you might also wonder if he's just saying it to be nice. But what if your colleague tells you, Hey, did you know that our boss praised you? He said you have a lot of potentials. If you were told in this way that you are being praised, wouldn't you be even happier? You wouldn't have the suspicious feeling like earlier, but rather be pleased that you're really being praised, right? That's because people feel much more appreciated when they're indirectly praised compared to being praised. Face to face. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. Let's get started then. Gossip has a pretty high chance of reaching the person being talked about. Likewise, when you talk positively about another person when they are not present, they would eventually know that you are praising them. And you become more and more liked by people. But once you know this, there are things you have to be careful about. There is one important thing. Are you ready to take my advice? You shouldn't talk behind someone's back. This is common sense. Just like with compliments, people often take indirect criticism more seriously than direct insults. That's why hearing negative comments about oneself through others can be much more frustrating than hearing them directly. For example, if your friend directly says, You shouldn't talk about such boring things. You wouldn't be hurt much, right? But if you heard from someone else, she said you're always talking about boring things. Wouldn't you get angry? That's what it's like. So, if you're talking behind someone's back, thinking it's okay because they're not there, You'll eventually get hurt. And there's one more thing you need to be careful about. The person who relays the insult may also end up being disliked. What? The person who conveyed it, but they didn't say anything bad, right? That's correct. Let me explain. Imagine you tell someone that person was talking about you behind your back. Although you're just relaying information, the person you tell may come to associate the negative feelings and the image of the person in question with you as well. As a result, Their impression of you may become negative. Therefore, when you hear someone talking behind someone else's back, it's best to avoid spreading the news to others. So, 
When you hear someone talking behind another person's back, it's safer not to tell anyone about it. On the contrary, when you hear a compliment, let's spread it around. The person who hears it will remember the happy feeling and your face together. You will also make a good impression by relaying the compliment. When you find yourself talking about a topic that the other person doesn't want to, don't worry. Here, I'll share with you a way to eliminate anxiety taught in Buddhism that is highly effective and very useful. I believe many people experience anxiety at some point in their lives. Even though you know that worrying is pointless, you end up worrying. It's like looking out at the world from inside a tunnel. Your perspective is limited. So you end up only thinking about that one thing. Worries keep popping into your head. At times like this, let's try to widen our narrow perspective. Imagine the feelings of someone who has experienced deeper sorrow than you, or someone who is in a difficult situation. When you're feeling anxious, for example, about your child's entrance exam, money troubles, or aging, try to broaden your perspective a little. Even now, somewhere in the world, there are people whose lives are not guaranteed for tomorrow. Many children are unable to attend school due to serious illnesses. There are a lot of them, and they are still fighting against illness at this very moment. And then, think about the families of those children. How do their parents feel? They are worried about their child's life, of course, but they may also be going around begging their relatives for money to cover the expenses. Despite that, when it comes to work, they put on a smile hiding their concern and work hard. When you think about the feelings of those people, you may realize that your worries are so small. I can't afford to be depressed. I need to live more strongly. You'll feel that way, and your anxiety will disappear, and you'll feel more empowered. When anxiety strikes, try to broaden your perspective and think about someone who has experienced deeper sorrow than you. Feel the determination with which they're living their lives. Your worries are not a big deal, are they? You'll even feel more energetic. Hopefully, this video is helpful to you. Well, that's about it for today's episode. How was it? I hope your life shines even brighter. Let's talk about life, time, Buddhism, love, and many other things together in the following episode. Please subscribe to our channel. Have a great time and keep on smiling. Thank you for listening till the end. See you soon.